Good morning. This video lecture is for class 6th subject English PC Ren Grammar chapter 16 punctuation. This topic has been taken from your PC Ren Grammar textbook and it is topic number 16 that is punctuations. We'll know what punctuation is, what punctuation marks are and how can we use these punctuation marks when we are writing sentences, paragraphs or basically we can say when we are writing big long paragraphs. So now I will quickly take you to the next slide that is the contents which we are going to cover in this video lecture. Entire topic punctuation will be covered only in one video lecture. Moving next. Content, introduction, common punctuation marks, full stop, comma, semicolon, colon, question mark, exclamation mark, quotation marks, capital letters, apostrophe and there's a practice exercise and homework and it's mandatory to do the homework. All these punctuation marks will be taught in detail in this video lecture. So without wasting time, let's quickly start with the introduction. What actually punctuation marks are? Moving to the first slide of the video. Introduction. What are punctuation marks according to you? Okay, well, I have an answer for every one of you. What actually punctuation marks are? Punctuation is a set of marks used in writing to clarify the meaning of a sentence or sentences. So basically punctuation is a set of marks used in writing to clarify the meaning of a sentence or sentences. Basically punctuation are there to find or to clarify that yes one sentence is complete and now the next sentence is going to begin. So punctuation is a set of marks used in writing to clarify the meaning of a sentence or sentences. Further the most common punctuation marks in English are capital letters. So the most common punctuation mark in English are capital letters, full stops, question marks, commas, colons and semicolons, exclamatory, exclamation, exclamatory mark and quotation mark. So the most common punctuation marks in English are capital letters and full stop, question marks, commas, colons and semicolons, exclamation mark and quotation marks. In speaking, we use pauses and the pitch of the voice to make what we say clear punctuation plays a similar role in writing making it easier to read so we use pauses and the pitch of the voice to make what we say clear punctuation plays a similar role in writing making it easier to read so this is the use of punctuation and that's why punctuation marks are used. They are used to clarify the meaning of a sentence or sentences. We use pauses and the pitch of the voice to make what we say clear. Punctuation also plays a similar role in writing, making it easier to read and understand. Moving to the next slide. Punctuation marks. The most common punctuation marks in English are Full stop, comma, semicolon, colon, question mark, exclamation mark, quotation marks or inverted comma. So these are each and every mark and this is their symbol. Full stop, comma, semicolon symbol, colon symbol, question mark, exclamation mark, quotation marks or inverted commas. Clear? So these are the most common punctuation marks. In
in English. Moving to the next slide. Full stop. We are going to start with the very first punctuation mark and that is full stop. And we are familiar with this. I hope everybody is familiar with this punctuation mark that is full stop. Now let's read about full stop. A punctuation mark that is full stop used at the end of a sentence or an abbreviation. A full stop indicates the greatest pause. We use a full stop at the end of assertive and imperative sentences. I read in class 7. So a punctuation mark is used at the end of the sentence or an abbreviation. Okay. What are abbreviation? Abbreviation means short form of a full name like prime minister. We write PM. So P dot M. That's an abbreviation short form. And a full stop indicates the greatest pause. Once the sentence is over, that's the greatest pause. We use a full stop at the end of assertive and imperative sentences. Assertive is simple sentences and imperative are command request order. So we use a full stop after assertive and imperative sentences. For example, I read in class 7. Next, pay attention to your study. So that is an imperative sentence. Clear? Next point. We use a full stop for abbreviations. Okay. Now I'll give you some examples. PM then is UK. United Kingdom. So if I'm using the short form of United Kingdom, I'm writing U dot K dot. So that is a U full stop K full stop. Next. If an abbreviation is formed with the first letter and the final letter of the full word. The full stop is omitted. Example, Dr. Mr. Mr. If an abbreviation is formed with the first letter, that means Dr. D is the first letter. R is the last letter, right? So that's what they are say saying here. If an abbreviation is formed with the first letter and the final letter of the full word, the full stop is omitted. We don't put a full stop. For example, Dr. D is the first word and R is the last word. Mr. M is the first word and R is the last word. So we don't use a full stop here. Okay. So that's wrong when we put a full stop of a doctor or Mr. We should not put it because it's an abbreviation in which the first and the final letter is used. That means the last letter is used in that we don't put a full stop. We omit that full stop. Clear? Moving next. We use a full stop in website and email addresses. You must have got your teacher's email addresses these days because you're posting your homework. So whenever we write our, we like write gmail.com, right? So dot com, that is a full stop there. So we use a full stop in website and email addresses. Example, www.yahoo.com. So the next punctuation mark that we are going to study is a comma. So now let's study what are the uses of comma and where do we use the this punctuation mark that is comma. A comma indicates the shortest pause. It is used in the following case. Let's read the cases first. To separate item in a series or list. For example, I want a eraser i want a eraser comma pencil comma sharpener comma scale comma a notebook so to separate items in a series or list so now quickly read it let's read its examples the examples are i have a pen comma a pencil and a rubber so these are the series or you can say items in a list next to mark off a noun in direct address to mark of a noun in direct address when we are addressing someone someone means if you are calling someone's name so mark of a noun for example Manish here is your book so Manish is the name and we are speaking we are directly addressing the noun noun is a name of person place animal or thing so Manish is a proper noun here it's a name of a person so Manish here is your book. So we are directly referring to Manish. So we are putting a comma after Manish. Next. 
before and after a phrase in a position okay we have to put a comma after or before a phrase in a position mr shukla my teacher is retiring next month okay opposition in a connection mr shukla my teacher is retiring next month next d1 two separate items in dates and places whenever we write the dates or places we put a comma after that for example august 10 2019 we have been writing this way in uh, our letters and everything so we when we write the date to change the name of the place or something like this way to show something else we put a comma next after the salutation and the complimentary close in a letter whenever we are writing the salutation or a complimentary close like from your best friend or uh, yours faithfully so we put a comma that is a complimentary close in a letter example dear grandmother comma next fifth one to separate a reported speech from the rest of the sentence let's read an example for this he said will you help me so this is what i think you people have done in direct and indirect speech you know whenever we are changing from direct always a direct sentence has a comma after he said she said ram said so to separate a reported speech from the rest of the sentence so we separate it by a comma right moving to the next one to separate a question tag from a statement whenever there is a statement to separate a question tag from a statement we put a comma example you are intelligent comma aren't you so you are intelligent aren't you so there's a question tag aren't you and there's a statement that you are intelligent so to separate the question tag and the statement we are putting a comma next to separate certain words or phrases like however finally in fact of course etc so to separate certain words or phrases we use a comma for example after however we put a comma after finally we put a comma after in fact we put a comma after of course we put a comma and after etc we put a full stop clear let's read an example for this my father however comma was reluctant to go so my father comma however comma was reluctant to go so we are going to put a comma after however so there are certain words of phrases like however finally in fact we put a comma after these is this clear to everyone so these are the places where we use a comma or these are the conditions where we have to put a comma clear to everyone okay moving to the next point to set off clauses where a pause is needed in reading this is usually the case if an adverb clause comes first in a sentence so to set off clauses where a pause is needed in reading this is usually the case let's read one example if it rains we will not play cricket if it rains so this is an adverb clause right so if it rains comma we will not play cricket so when we have to set off the clauses and where the pause is needed in reading we put a comma so if it rains comma we will not play cricket so these are the places or the conditions where we put a comma moving to the next semicolon a semicolon represents a greater pause than that indicated by a comma so if you people remember full stop is the greatest pause and semicolon is a bit greater than that indicated by a comma a semicolon is used to join two independent clauses not connected by a conjunction like and so a semicolon is used to join two independent clauses independent clauses means two sentences which are not dependent on each other 
other okay they are individually one complete sentence so a semicolon is used to join two independent clauses not connected by a conjunction like and example we can go to the museum to do some re research mondays are pretty quiet there so if you read we can go to the museum to do some research is one complete sentence mondays are pretty quiet there that is one sentence right so we are joining or we are connecting these two sentences with the help of a semicolon okay here we have not used any conjunction but they can be indicated or they can be represented with the help of a semicolon clear next a semicolon is used when a conjunct conjunctive adverb or transitional phrase links two independent clauses some common conjunct uh, conjunctive adverbs include moreover nevertheless however otherwise therefore then finally likewise and consequently so a semicolon is used when a conjunctive adverb or transitional phrase like links two independent clauses and some common conjunctive adverbs include moreover nevertheless so these are the some common conjunctive adverbs let's read one example for that the students had been advised against walking alone at night however kathy thought walking was not dangerous if it was early in the evening so now can you see they have indicated with a semicolon the students had been advised against walking alone at night yes that is one independent clause that means it's one complete sentence it is not dependent on any anything so after that we are putting however after however you people if you remember in comma we had read that we put a comma after however nevertheless these type of words and before this a semicolon comes clear in case of a of a transitional phrase clear to everyone moving to the next i am not all that fond of the colors of tiger lilies moreover they don't smell very good so after tiger lilies there is a semicolon then after moreover there is a comma i am not all that fond of the colors of tiger lilies moving to the next point a semicolon is used to separate clauses particularly if the clauses have internal commas example for this flight group a checks in with b c and d in with e and f checks in with g so a semicolon is used to separate clauses particularly if the clauses have internal commas internal commas means when they already have a comma when in a sentence we have already put a comma so to show the separate clauses we particularly put the semicolons okay so for this flight group a checks in with b semicolon c and d check in with e semicolon and f checks in with g full stop clear to everyone next colon so now we had studied about semicolon semicolon is one dot and a comma and colon is two dots a colon represents a greater pause than that indicated by a semicolon so comma is a very short pause semicolon is a bit greater than that and colon is greater than semicolon also okay let's read about it a colon is used to set off dialogue for a play or other script for example if there's an english play in your school and i have selected three students or i and i have to write a speech or i have to write the dialogues of the children so there are three children i'll write maya and i'll put colon her dialogue is this ram i'll put colon dialogue is this right sita i'll put two co uh, colons and then i will write the dialogue to separate that particularly this dialogue is for sita this dialogue is for ram and this dialogue is for the other speaker so now let's read an example for him principal 
Kamla, why were you late this morning? So after principal, there is a colon because I've specified who is going to speak this dialogue for the play principal. Next, Kamla, the power went off. So I slept in. Okay, so this is the dialogue of Kamla. Next, second, a colon is used to separate a title from a subtitle. You must be watching this before you must have even opened your video lecture. The first page, even when I put a title, for example, if I put PC Ren grammar textbook, then I put topic 15, 16, anything. Then I will put colons because that is the title and the subtitle is the name of your topic which I am going to take today. So a colon is used to separate the main title from a subtitle. Example, Roots, the saga of an American family. Clear? So Roots is the main title and subtitle is the saga of an American family. Third, a colon is used to introduce contrasting statements. Okay. Example, it was useless to try pleasing him. He criticized everything. So means contrasting statements which differ. So it was useless to try pleasing him. He criticized everything. So in these three cases, we use a colon. Then further, next is question mark. I think it's very easy for you people to identify where question mark will be put as punctuation mark. Wherever or whichever statement asks you a question, you feel it's asking you a question. There you have to put a question mark. Let's read about this punctuation mark. A question mark is used at the end of an interrogative sentence. Example, have you talked to Prem? Next, what are you doing? So question marks are always put at the end of an interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences are the sentences which ask a question to us. For example, have you talked to Prem? Question mark. What are you doing? Question mark. Clear to everyone? Next, a question mark is used after a direct question which is inserted into a statement. If the question comes at the end, separate it with a comma. Okay, let's read an example. The question was, comma, was she really doing the best she could? Question mark. So here a question mark is used after a direct question which is inserted into a statement. First there was a statement and followed by a question. So I have separated the statement with a comma. And then after the question, I have put a question mark. So that's what it is saying. A question mark is used after a direct question, which is inserted into a statement. If the question comes at the end, separate it with a comma. Clear to everyone? Question mark. I think this is the easiest punctuation mark. Moving further. If the inserted question comes in the beginning put the question mark in the middle okay in case if was she really doing the best she could would have come first then also you're going to put a question mark once the question is over clear moving next was she really doing the best she could question mark was the question Okay, so now see, was she really doing the best she could? I put a question mark after that. Followed by the statement was the question. Clear? So in case if the question statement comes first, then you have to put a question mark after that. Right? Third case, when writing a series of questions, use a question mark for each item. Even if items are not complete sentences, you have to put a question mark. What are you doing? Question mark. Where did you go? Question mark. So when there are series of questions, so you have to put a question mark after each and every question. The board members had to decide on a new course of action for the company. 
so the board members had to decide on a new course of action for the company expand sell out consider new financial reforms so now expand question mark sell out question mark consider new financial reforms question mark so the two board members had to decide on a new course of action for the company so then there was a question expand question mark sell out question mark consider new financial reforms so it is a series of questions and each word or each sentence will be symbolized with a question mark clear moving next exclamation mark an exclamation mark is used at end of a sentence to express an exclamation what a beautiful pen you have next alas we have lost the match i think it's very easy to recognize an exclamatory sentence and you people also know where to put a exclamation mark don't get confused between the you can say the interrogative sentence and exclamatory sentences because basically interrogative sentences will ask a question and exclamatory are easy to differentiate as they are a statement which tell your feelings okay so basically exclamatory sentences are the sentences which tell the feeling of your for example happy sad sorrow so these type of feelings are expressed by an exclamatory sentences and we put an exclamation mark after that clear to everyone moving next quotation marks quotation marks or inverted commas are used to set off a direct quotation direct quotation direct statement right we have done in direct and indirect when there were direct statements there was always quotation marks moving ahead chand chandan said i will win the match next the principal said don't make a noise next quotation marks are used to set off title of poems articles book chapters or essays that are part of a longer work means when you take a shot or you can say when you highlight a line of a poem article book chapter essay then also we quote it with a quotation mark we highlight it with a quotation mark example the next chapter of the book was the monster returns from the dead okay so i have highlighted with a single inverted comma open and close the monster returns from the dead next example in lesson 2 comma you read the poem single inverted comma open the road less traveled single inverted comma close and a full stop so these are quotation marks next quotation marks are often used with technical terms terms used in an unusual way or other expressions that vary from standard usage example in poetry the term alliteration refers to the repetition of beginning letters of words so basically when i am specifically focusing or putting my emphasizes on the term alliteration i have highlighted it with a single inverted comma open and close so here we you have used quotation mark for capital letters now capital letters you know the name of a person place animal or thing begins with a capital letter anything which is proper noun will begin with a capital letter let's read about it v capitalize the first word of a sentence and the personal pronoun i what should i do we capitalize the first word in a direct quotation he said i will help him next we capitalize the names of people i told you proper noun names of people sachin tendulkar 
clear rahul dravid fourth we capitalize the names of countries races languages and nationalities indian tamil french moving next we capitalize the names of religions like islam sixth we capitalize the names of months days of the week but not seasons okay they always the autumn season winter season they are not written in capital letters but days of the week like monday tuesday january february they are all written with a capital letter march 7th we capitalize the names of orga organizations clubs historical events and periods of time so we capitalize these names rotary club we capitalize titles of movies books magazines plays newspapers and poems so we capitalize the title the name of these movies books magazines play newspaper and poems oliver twist practice exercise there is one practice exercise that you have to do on your own and we shall be discussing the answers in the class moving with the questions of the practice exercise punctuate the following sentences you have to punctuate the following sentences he is not really nice looking and yet he has enormous charm next sentence when i was a child i could watch tv whenever i wanted to next it is a fine idea let us hope that it is going to work fourth Mrs Solomon who was sitting behind the desk gave me a big smile we were believe it or not in love with each other sixth i don't i don't like this one bit said julia have you met our handsome new financial director If you are ever in London come and see you Michael in the Ferrari was cornering superbly looking straight at her he said i can't help you okay moving to the next slide that's your homework and it's mandatory to do the homework Thank you have a nice day thank you for being such good listeners thank you